It is upon the strength of this port I plan to secure my kingship. Asar told me that your throne may not be entirely steady. King Flan needs some persuading us all. Dublin's vast trade web will bring wealth to all Ireland. If Flan can be made to see that, my kingship and that of my children's children will be safe. I cannot guarantee your throne, but a vast trading web is within my power. No one else I trust my commerce to, old man. <laughs> you let him call you that? I call him worse things. Barith, my king! I still owe you a horn of ale. <sighs> this is where I leave you. Don't miss the banquet. I'll be there shortly. <laughs> Mind my sea king. Aoife, this is my cousin, Eivor. Show him the bow I had you make for him. This is for me? The craftsmanship is beautiful. Me best work. Give her a try. Hit the targets before the sand runs out. Think you can get them all? Of course I will. Stand ready to be astonished. Aren't you the confident one? Sure I'll be embarrassed for you if you shat on the eggs. Watch my arrows fly. I certainly will. Go! Very nice bow. Thank you, Barith. Steps off the boat after a long sea voyage and shoots like a master. Well done, cousin. Wait, is that a house of God? Aye, Christ's own church. Ireland is mostly Christian now, and so is Dublin. Many Norse chew the wafer. You make a place for them. Them? I myself have a place in Christ's house, as I do in the house of Thor. So long as a god has my back, he has my altar. I've built this city up from rubble. Twenty years ago, us Vikings were beaten. The Irish took revenge and sacked Dublin. Asa told me that it's a Viking city. Norse founded it, and I nursed it back to health. When I became king, I was king of a mud pit. There, up ahead, my home. <laughs> my only regret is that my mother and my wife aren't here to greet you. They've gone on pilgrimage to the mountains just now. The waters there improve mother's health. I am left to discipline my wayward son. And to host a banquet. Which should be already underway. Here we are. Please go enjoy yourself. I must have a word with my son. Come meet him before the night's out. Azar, I was not sure if I would see you here. Why is that? I thought you'd rather take stock of your wares than placidly observe caterwauling Vikings. And you. You would rather spend time with this gossiping auntie. I like to greet everyone at parties. There is no shortage of amusements. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> hey! Hi. Enjoying yourself? It's great crack. It's a fine thing to celebrate future King Sigfrith. 
I'm curious. How do you feel Barith has done as king? Oh, he's done a lovely job he has. Likes to throw feasts. Invites us common folk. More host than king, perhaps, but he's a fine man, and the city has never been busier. Can I ask, what is your life like in this city? Well, there's a fair amount of work, isn't there? Hauling crates, shoveling muck. I'm a tanner myself. Long days stripping hides and dousing them in cow piss. You can probably smell the stench. <laughs> I can. Enjoy the feast, friend. You as well. What happened? Sigfrid! I expect my son to act like the future king, not roll in the muck. So Flan will take you on as his farting court jester. Think with your head and not your arse. Flan can assure my throne, which will one day be yours. That makes you the arse. Enough! Eivor, my son, Sigfrid. I'm sorry, I... I must clear my head. Could you speak to the boy? I was looking forward to meeting my cousin's son. So, you're the cousin who Da speaks so fondly of. Is the old fool reduced to importing Vikings now? In Norway, you'd be knocked to the ground by now. Come on, then. If you've any guts worth respecting. Fine, whelp. You won't land a single punch. Yes, I owe you thanks for not beating me, bloody. I'm not here to quarrel with you, Siegfried. Da speaks so highly of you. I wanted to see if you lived up to the stories. Does anyone? You aren't happy with how your father rules. Da has the makings of a fine king. But he chooses to play the unctuous merchant instead. A visit to Norway might do a young viking girl like you some good. I'd love to go with Da. Maybe the homeland would kindle his warrior spirit. Give Dublin a fair and fearsome king. I've lost track of your father. Any idea where he might be? He wanted to clear his head. That means he's visiting grandfather's grave. Da has a chat with him almost every day. Bardeth can commune with the dead? <laughs> no. His conversations are all one-sided. The grave sits at the top of the hill. I'll find him. Thank you, Siegfried. Eivor! Teach me how to hit like that sometime. What do you see, Sunan? Spread your wings, Sunan.
need your eyes, my friend. Bardith. Huh. Why so uneasy? <sighs> A king must forever be on guard. When I'm upset or uncertain, I come here to seek my father's spirit. I didn't even ask after him. Somehow I knew he'd... Some years ago, he was destined to die in battle, and he did. He sits with Odin now. My family owes yours a solemn debt. That winter, your family came to stay with us. I remember your birth, screaming like a warrior. The plague year. No one would take us in. No one but your mother and father. I owe your family my life. And what a life we had. I have fond memories of you and I slipping out to hunt. In dead of night. Stars in the sky, moonlight and snow. <laughs> and that's how I got that scar. <laughs> I do feel bad about that. What about the one on your cheek? This? A caution from the guards about my vanity. Come. If we tell all our stories, we'll be here a week. Do you see something? My imagination run amok, but let us away. Don't get distracted! Funny how just the slightest noise sets a fellow on edge. Why Thor's hammer, Barith? I could sleep a week. Not as spry as the old days, eh? When we'd search the night in hopes of catching a will-o'-the-wisp. Did we catch one? I have a memory of catching one. My ascension to the throne has not been without contest. The previous king's son, Thorstein, is resentful. You told me nothing of this. You are my guest. I am not going to burden you with petty concerns. Petty concerns? I now know why you've been anxious all evening. Aye, it is worrying. He's never been so bold before. He sees you as a usurper to his throne. Perhaps, but he doesn't seem to want to take it. He contents himself by stealing and smuggling with his band of ruffians. It's petty Viking raiding, but it puts me in a bad light with Flan. That's certain. Keep a sharp watch. Brigands rove the streets tonight. You can be sure of me, my king. Always the last to leave a party. What is wrong? We were ambushed by Thorstein's men. Rivals I was not made aware of. Small wonder King Flan does not embrace you, Bardith. You cannot keep control of the Vikings in your own city. Thorstein makes me look like more of an arse than I do on my own. I see. It is the High King's disfavor that makes this shameful. My cousin, I will take care of Thorstein. No, I do not want to drag you into this sorry mess. Perhaps he'll accept Silver to lie low. For a week or two, but then he'll be back and back again. I can remove this blood once and for all. Eivor, this is not your fight. For any and all of your God's sakes, Barith, let Eivor help you. As of this moment, Barith, my arm is yours. Whatever is needed to bring Flan's smile upon you, I will do. Eivor... I have never been so happy. 
Your family saved mine those years ago. A fitting reply would be to secure your throne. I will start with Thorstein. It happens that Siegfried may know something. He once ran with Thorstein's gang. Sadly true. Seek him tomorrow in the marketplace. After a night of carousing, he likes to recuperate there. We will begin to forge a bond with High King Flan on Rise of Sun. Marketplace. I need to learn about Thorstein. <laughs> 